We going live. We going live. Oh, all live. the way live. We in the we building. Live. We in the building. We in the building. See what we gonna get into tonight. What can we stir up? What we gonna stir up? Look. I did a video before all oh, your nationality means nothing. I got some. I got Man, some good views out of that. Yeah, you're like, trying to start something up. Yeah, I'm storing something up. Get the more King Gal Bay. Get the more stored up. So up. I hear you, man. We in the building, man. We, I guess we gonna get it started. We gonna get it cracking. All right, so y'all, well, we back in the building. We got the team back again, man. Uh, you got your boy Bandele Elamine back again, and we got our main man King El Bay in the building. In the building, All right. family in the building. So, Peace, y'all. Peace, peace. Baragani Islam Salam. We about to get into this, man. Tonight, uh, tonight we want to get into the, like, what is the agenda for the Moors? What What is the goals for the movement? What are What the hell are we doing, man? That's 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 what we're gonna talk about tonight, and I, I mean it. We're not giving away the the nuke and the cranny, but we going we just want to give you like, where are we going as a people? How's, how is this help benefiting the salvation, the upliftment and the betterment for the melanated, the race, man. So, uh, let's get into it tonight, man. Uh, go ahead, my brother, break them, let them know. Yeah. I know my camera. We're going to, we're going to talk about what is the movement, what is what is first that Moors have to do to make this movement real, right? The first thing we have to do is understand our needs. We got to be able to support our basic needs. We have to start from understanding as they talk about Maslow law, Maslow. So we have to look at that. And we have to start understanding that we have to put some real goals into play. We can't just study law, study history, and all of these different things. It has to be uh, moving towards a common goal. So one of the common goals that we have to practice in our, to make some things foundational is that we first got to make a checklist of what those goals what do those things look like so let's get into what we need to secure most of us need land that's one of the first things you need certain things we are land dwellers we're not sea dwellers so we have to secure land the second we got to have water the third we need food bank so y'all think about oh a bank now you need banks or different forms of different things that house different things so you we need a food bank if there's food shortage there's water shortage we need to have those things on reserve to start being able to be able to maintain our way of life so we got to have some common goals. We got to start understanding what the movement it is. The second thing that we need to know, we need to know our enemy. We need to know what we're up against. It's cool to understand history and law, but you must understand your enemy, the psychology of your enemy. How is they attacking us? They, so many of us don't understand this legal stuff. They think they do. They're going to tell you and bring out all the ancient things and all of that. But that's not what we're dealing with in modern times. The enemy has evolved. But we have to evolve with the enemy. You have to understand what's going on. The, 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 
the game of chess that they're playing. So when you meet different levels of chess players, they have a different level of skill sets when you're on the chess board. You might, you might meet your beginners, then your intermediate players. Then you're going to meet your more advanced, then you're going to meet your masters. Those who play the game and calculated everything, they know how to set traps. They know how to make you move in a certain way. And it's a different game being played at that level. So most of us are not there. So when it comes down to this stuff, like me and Chief, Chief been in this for a long time, over 20 years. I've been doing this for 13 years now. I think the persistency and the consistent is what gave us the element that we need now. And it took a while because there's a lot of different pieces that I had to figure out. I had to figure out, they was talking about banking, all of these laws, all of these different things. And we, I was looking at all of this stuff, trying to figure out. I, I was a great litigator, but then I started to understand, what is the context behind this? Let me peek behind the curtain. Let me see what they're doing behind the curtain. And as I evolved my level of understanding what law is and what really, what is legal lease, as we talking about jurisdictional or jurisprudence, as we talking about corporate, as they talk about corporate delecti, what is they talking about? Dilecti. Learn what these words in Latin mean. You got to understand your you got to understand your enemy and their psychological and where they're going with this. Because most of y'all don't. I think we understand history. We know some law, but then we don't under then we get lost in their matrix. We so wrapped up into what they're doing. We lose ourselves in what we should be doing. And then we get caught up chasing what they got going on instead of keeping our mindset on what we need to have going on. I listen to so many people chasing, oh man, we got to get this money. We got to do this. We got to do this. And they teaching you finance. And I'm like, how could you teach finance and you don't even understand the Constitution? How you going to teach somebody financial literacy and you don't even know how, what form and how this institution works, all the different intricate parts of the institution and how it's running and how it's functioning. Most people don't even understand that. People say, man, you need the old stocks. You need to have bonds. You need to have, you know, get some good credit. And they don't even understand the system itself. No doubt. Peace, peace, uh, Sister Phyllis. Good What's to up, see you man? in the building. Hey, Good to son. see you in the building. Y'all, for everybody on here, you know, please uh, like the video, smash that like button, subscribe, and share this video. All right. So go ahead, my brother. You were saying. Um, I'm just saying it's a lot of things being taught and we don't even understand like even when we talk about law and the degrees and level of what we're talking about we don't even understand what's going on no doubt no doubt um, you know when I look at this topic man I'm like what's the agenda um I feel like we the agenda has always been the same, but we have not been able to make it come into fruition. And I look at when I look at the past, I look at the Black Panthers. Like for me, I feel like the Black Panthers was like the last big movement against the system and i feel like since then we kind of been stuck in the mud man like i don't think that we've been uh 
but what we need the to objective? Do. What was the objective? Even when we talk about the Black Panther, what is the overall objective? What is our goal? What is we all striving towards? What are we moving towards? What is what do that? What is the conversation for that? Okay, I think I think it was at one point equality in the land with others we wanted equality we wanted a piece of the pie we wanted the american dream but uh i think today i think there needs to be a new agenda and that's what i think we're going to talk about today is the new agenda so when we say equality what do that equate to what is that if we had to draw a picture what would that look like I mean, at the time, I think people wanted the same things that <clears throat> they felt like the same opportunities as other Americans, uh, particularly the uh, Albion or the white man. They wanted the same abilities to have. They wanted to be able to get the jobs or whatever it was, the, the opportunity to make the kind of money, to have the same kind of affordability to housing, to just on those levels, man. You know, you got to think about it. These people were coming out of slavery and Jim Crow. So I think their perception of what was equality or what the agenda was probably in the 60s would be different than what we had. Because we need to be somewhere else. We don't need to be where we was at in the 60s. We right. need to be further than where we at. But I feel like we stuck. We, we ain't no better than we were in the 60s. Like, like what's, what's we, haven't been, we haven't been no better than what we were. I think when we came out of slavery, we were more self-sufficient than at any other given time because we had businesses, we had we had our own everything. We had Black Wall Street. We were building homes. We were totally independent. At one point in time in history, we had 42 federal banks. There were a lot of progression. You haven't seen none of that since that era. It hasn't, even in the 60s, we didn't have black banks or Morris banks or whatever you want to identify with yourself is. We didn't have those things. After slavery, we came out hitting the ground running because we had a focus we had an agenda we knew what we wanted we wanted our own we didn't want to fit in we knew our place and we made things happen a lot of a lot of this history has been blurred and tried to make you think that i remember my grandmother told me when she was younger they lived in a all black community my grandmother was half Cherokee. So they lived in a community. She said the streets were clean. The grass was cut. They had nice homes. She right. said, I mean, when she was younger, when she was married, my mother used to tell me about they didn't grow up poor. My, my mother said they was a middle class family. Right. Shout out to KB in the building. 8.0. I see. You no. Know, oh, hey, join in a convo, bro. If you want to come and join in. I mean, you can come in if you want to come on. But uh, if you don't want to come on, just just drop some stuff in the chat or, you know. So I think a lot of people, I think now, I think the. I think what we allow to do, allow ourselves to get even more compromised. Because I think now we're we're more lazier. We got more comfortable because we think that some of us think that we have a ride. And the truth of the matter is that we never have a ride. We never have um, really made it to the forefront. We are a trillion, uh, we are a trillion dollar a year people, but on 
we don't even own one percent of the nation's wealth we don't own nothing we don't own nothing you understand what i'm saying they didn't trick us they say own nothing but control everything while they own it through their corporations and their corporations are insured and they got us holding on to these insurances but then they can infiltrate it's coming to your community and take everything you know make your strip you of everything put us in the ghetto and control it in the 60s you got to remember women weren't even allowed to have men in the home if they were on welfare right they had they, they had people literally come in knock on your door and inspect your home if there was a man in the house he would have to leave or you your benefits would get stripped i agree um i do feel like we can thank we can thank integration for that i think we can thank integration for a lot of the problems that we face in today you know we got tricked we get we always getting tricked because we're trying to follow the we're trying to follow them and what they trying to do for us and not not sticking to what we know we need to do you know the, right the, now now go ahead but think about it right and we had our own butchers you had your tailors we had our own everything in our community so the right. money circulated in our community and definitely after slavery the money you know, I mean, there were there were people like they want you to believe after slavery, it was people that was prominent. But you gotta remember, after slavery, all the slaves had all the skills. You you talk about skilled labor from everything, from inventors to builders. The the, the slaves did it all. So they had all they when they left they took all the skills with them they had to go in literally and start burning down because we were wearing the short suits you got to remember we was the tailors we made clothes we did it all facts facts so when you take that kind of skilled labor and you let them people be independent, you never had that much skilled labor in America ever again. After slavery, that period of time, you had the most skilled people ever in history of, of that look like me and you. Yeah. Another thing was that they... Uh... They, we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of towns. Like people don't realize how many towns melanated people occupy as their own town, like a black so-called black town. Man, it was way more black towns than it is today. Way more. It was man. It's so, it was it's so man. They tried to erase the history. It was so many black towns. They 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 put them underwater. They try to hide all the history. Yep, exactly. Like she's saying, they they became jealous and destroyed our communities. We've been conversing about the many black communities underwater. Exactly. And I was going to say that a lot of them, they put them underwater. I mean, like when we talk about uh, what's the park in New York? Uh, what's the park in New York? The major park, y'all. Somebody put it in the chat. It's the biggest part in, in New York. That used to be, uh, that's where all the black people used to be. Central Park, where Central Park was. And Central Park, that used to be black. And they pushed them out. We were doing what we were supposed to do. And 
and they will tear it down. Listen, we knew what we wanted. We wanted our freedom. We wanted our economics. And they couldn't exactly. stop us because we had all the labor. We had all the knowledge. We came out of slavery hitting the ground, running. But what we, we doing now? What we doing now? We're we stagnant because of the integration. So you got to think about it. We're most of our what happens to most of our money soon we get it. Now think about what happened when they gave out these stimulus. Man, you seen long lines in Walmart, bro. All the big screen TVs was gone. People went out and bought big screen TVs. You know how much you know what kind of you know what kind of thing you could have did if you could have said, hey, black people, Moors or whatever, let's take all that money. And let's start a bank. If we would just invest it in ourselves as a collective, if we would just invest as a collective, we could have bought land. Now, Bill Gates out here buying all the dang on land. Right. right. I mean, I'm going to tell you, the agenda, I feel like the agenda today is worse. We're in a much worse place than we were in the 60s. And we got to become independent. Like, I don't know. I, like, I want y'all, whoever in the chat room, what do you think the agenda is right now? What should the agenda be? Because... I felt like we don't know like no more. Like, like what are the what are the Moors doing? Like, what is the agenda of the Moors? What is the agenda of our people? What are the agenda? What's the agenda of the Hebrew Israelites? Like, what is the focus on? Is it just talking? Talking about the white man? Uh giving history? Or is there something? that we're doing to move us forward. That's what I want to know, y'all. That's what we're here to talk about. Because I need, we need to know where the mind of the people are at. Now, I'm, I, and I'm not saying we sitting here talking about every nuke, everything that we want to do, but I'm saying as a general consensus, what is it generally that we must do? We, you know, I mean, I feel like we need land, and with we need land, we need resources. Like we gotta focus on investing in resources, because right now, what are we doing? I, I mean, I'm talking about the conscious community. What is the conscious community doing? I'm trying to. I mean. What you think, man? Um, first of all, I think the first aspect we need to understand is before you can help a man who's hungry, you first got to do what? You have to stop his hunger. So we got to we got to start understanding what our needs. We got to meet our needs first. What are some of our needs? Food, clothing, shelter. Right, but some of us, you got to understand too, some of us are emotionally traumatized. We have a lot of unmet needs and it's hard for us to move forward. So each community has their own special needs with on top of the basic needs, but they have their special needs. So we have to tackle both of those issues maintain the the basic needs and look at the special needs that's needed in each environment because every community is suffering from a, a specific special need just like look what's going on they talking about there's no water in mississippi they said this sewage is is you know what i'm saying so that's a special need People can't even cook, drink water. 
So right. even if you got food, clothing, and shelter, right? Now you now you have a contaminated sewage issue, and you don't even have no no water to take a bath, right? Not any clean, filtered water. So now that's a special need that needs to be tackled and need to be uh, exploited and observed to say, okay, we need to tackle this agenda for our community. You see what I'm saying? So, like. In Detroit, they had all that contaminated water. You had a- they still do. Ah, huh? correction, it's still contaminated. <laughs> what you mean? Okay, <laughs> but but this is why I'm saying these things. We need to resolve those issues for our community because they resolve it for theirs. I guarantee, in certain prevalent parts of Detroit, they ain't having those issues. They resolved it. They figured out, okay, we're going to save ourselves and those who don't understand it left in the dark or they have to deal with it. But I think we have to start, and I think that some of us, I think it's overkill in certain things of, of in this movement that something we need to start putting action to foot. Action from mouth to hand we got to start putting action in and it can't just be all talking okay you need to learn this because at the same time if if i can't provide your basic needs how well is history going to help us how well is law going to help us Shorty can't eat no books, you know what I'm saying? Oh, let me, let me see what my sister got to say. Sister, there was a black man who made a machine that produced water for the people in Michigan. Uh, remember, it was sabotaged. And see, that's the thing, because what happens with us is that we do things on an individual basis. And I felt like as an individual, we can always be attacked and destroyed quite easily. But it's like when we come together as a collective to do what we need to do. And that's why I think, it, I mean, that's where it's got to go. It's got to become a collective thing because I do, it's like I see all these individuals with all this money. You know, I see the Jay-Z's and, and, the, uh, and the Kanye's and whatever who got all this money but it's all, it's all like they got it. It's not, they're not looking at it as a collective effort. Like, what am I going to, how am I going to use my money to help uplift the community, take us out of this situation? If me, I mean, I feel like shit, if Jay Z and Kanye by them damn selves put, put their money together and, and created some facilities for the, so-called black people in America, I mean, dang, we would probably be a lot further than where we are. But it's all this individualism. Check D. Think about this. Akon went back to Africa and created Akon City. Why couldn't Jay-Z, Kanye West, all the football players, all LeBron James, why couldn't they buy a city, a town, and develop it? And say, come down here and learn. Come down here and grow. Come down here and get this. Come exactly. out better. You see what I'm saying? You, you, instead of reinvesting in things that you know that you think that. See, this is what I learned. If you see, if you, anytime you see. A full black man, you're going to find a fat white man behind you. And what do I mean by that? The black man, anytime you see a rich black man, you're going to see a richer white man standing in the background. Because we're constantly working for their agenda. They ain't going to let you make yourself. We make them richer while we get rich. Exactly. Exactly. We don't have an agenda. This whole video, this whole live is about the agenda. 
We ain't got no damn agenda. We sitting up here. We sitting up here, man, just. I don't know. I mean, satisfied. I feel like we satisfied. And, and that's the problem. I think we're too comfortable. I think welfare has made us comfortable. I think that. Um, Peace to Johnny Walkwell. Good to see you back, family. Peace and love, man. To love, my brother. I think we 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 too we too uh, we too comfortable. Now we can afford, you know, nice shoes. This the average family. I mean, you could. I mean, I be. I look at myself. My kids like Jordans and all that stuff too. And sometimes I give into some of those things. But you got to think about it. It was a time that people we didn't have, we couldn't afford any of these luxuries. And I think it's like, but it's like we got more money allegedly. But our communities are worse off. Exactly. We we make three. We the six richest people on the planet. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, man, it's just, it's crazy, bro. It's like. I, all like all the stuff I study, man. I done looked through all of African history, through Black history, and we were fighting for, you know, the right to live. We was we were fighting for the right to live, and it seems like for the past forty years, we ain't did nothing. It's like we gave up. Where is our agenda? It's like okay, I remember this, Farrakhan. Million Man March. He raised a million dollars. But what was the agenda? It's like, where is our agenda? I mean, we got money, money without an agenda is asinine, bro. Asinine. It makes no sense at all, man. This is for everybody. For everybody who's going to watch this video after the fact, who not live with me tonight? I want you to watch this video and think about what are we doing? Where are we going? I mean, what, 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 is black, what? Black Lives Matter? Is that is that what we got? Is that what we talking about? Black Lives Matter? Is that the agenda? Is it to assimilate? Is it to become more dependent than we already are? I want I want my Morris brothers to answer the question, what is the agenda? Is it reparations? Is it independence? Hell, Hell. you give look at that. What if we gave everybody one point five million dollars? Would that help us as a people? Because, I mean without without an agenda, we just some rich niggas. With money, just spending. We ain't gonna like like David Chappelle said. Everybody gonna be buying uh, Escalades. They gonna have a truck full of uh, Newports. I mean, dope stuff. I mean, like I'm saying, like you give us this money and we think that's gonna solve our problem, but it's not. We'll be broke. We'll be broke in five years, ten years. Niggas will be broke again. Man, we'll be broke. Not hell now. We'll be broke in a year and a half. Damn, bro. I'm just saying. And that's what I'm saying. Without an agenda. Without an agenda. What's the goal? And even to have an agenda, you still got to have short-term and long-term goals. What's the goal to satisfy the agenda? What do they look like? What is we're aspiring to be as a people? What 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 are which what if is we we still praying to Jesus? Most of them still praying to Jesus. They got us in the pie in the sky. I don't know what the heck these brothers is thinking about because stuff is going down. Like they're gonna be. 
What if there's a food shortage, man? What's the plan for the food shortage? What's the plan for the economy if it crash? What's the plan? Is there going to be a bartering system set up? What are the plan and agenda for melanated people to succeed and continue to grow in the next hundred years? Where do we plan to see ourselves in the next hundred years? And that's why I got into estate planning. Because estate planning, at least you have to plan for at least you I have sister, to plan. No, go ahead. I see Sister Phyllis has said people people have to do things on the local or state level right now. They have the topic of slavery on five state ballots. Okay, hold up. They have the topic of slavery. So what 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 you mean by that? They got the topic of slavery on the ballots. Um, and what in what particular way are you talking about? My fault, bro. I just I just want to read her off, read her sister off. You there? I can't hear you. Hold on. I'm, I'm still there. Okay. I mean, you're right. We do need to do things on a local level. There needs to be some kind of local movement on doing things. But my question is, what should the agenda be? It's like, because it's like so-called black people are always saying that we don't have this, we don't have that, that we are you know, still being oppressed as a people, which I do believe. But what I'm saying is, are we going to continue to just talk about it and talk about how how we're being done in? Or do we have a plan? So if it's a local thing, I mean, I mean, like I said, it's food, clothing and shelter are the always have been the fundamental pillars of independence like if you if you're not able to feed yourself close yourself or you're not able to create your own shelter then you pretty much is dependent on somebody else let me see what this is this. she said basically what the u.s constitution is speaking of i believe there's a hidden twist okay okay yeah i need to i need to look more into that because I'm not, I haven't, uh, I haven't been keeping up with it as much as I, I, I should, you know. But uh, I'm, I definitely am going to look into that later on today, tonight or tomorrow. So, okay, my thing is this: we've been talking about all the problems, right? Okay, I want to talk about solutions, like because it, it appears that. The agenda, there is no a real agenda from these groups that we are in, like the Moors and the Hebrew Israelites, the Christians, whatever. None of those groups really seem to have a clear cut agenda that seems to propel us as a people. So what we need to talk about now is to, at this point is what is the agenda need to be? What is our agenda? And I'll, I'll let you go ahead, man, and speak on what specifically are the things that we need to really focus on 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 a on a on a short scale and a long scale. Okay, so first we need to understand wealth. What is wealth? We need to define what wealth is and what wealth look like. That's the first thing that needs to be discussed. What is wealth? Wealth is a group of men and women securing an environment and maintaining all his resources and building institutions for the embedment enrichment of their lives. That is wealth. So that's the first thing has to be defined about wealth, securing an environment. How do you secure it? If you, if you look at 
If you look at the United States elements of national security, let me see if I can uh, look up national security. Let me see if I can pull that up, Mandalay, and see if you can put that on the screen. Yeah, I got you. So I talked, I did a show on this. Yeah, y'all got to check out King King El Bay's uh, show as well, man. It's under, uh, it's under Must, the Morris Universal Society of Tribes. Yeah. Yeah, because he be dropping them jewels every day. Big up, everybody smash that like button. So, um, so what you trying to pull up? Um, pulling up national security. So, um, I got it. So, how do we gonna do? I'm gonna share this. I'm, I'm waiting for it to show up. Yeah, if you if it, when you put it up here, I'll share it. Okay. Can you see that? Not yet. How do I need to, do I need to share my screen? Yeah, you need to share yours. Okay. You need to share it like you was doing it. All right. Now I'm going to put up. It should pop up. Okay. That's national security. Can you, you ain't see? doing this. Yeah, it's popping up now. Hold on. I'm about to put it on. Add the string. Okay. Booyah. It should be popping up. Popping up. You see it? Yeah, I see it. There we go. Okay. So it talks about national security or national defense. It's the security and defense of a sovereign state, including its citizens, economy, and institutions, which is regarded as a duty of government. Originally conceived as protection against military tax attack national security is widely understood include a also a non-military di dimensions including the security from terrorism minimization of crime economic security energy security environmental security food security cyber security Similar nations, similar national security risks include, in addition to actions of nation states and by violent non state actors, by narcotic cartels, and by multinational corporations, also effects of natural disasters. Government rely on the range of measures, including political, economic, and military power, as well as diplomacy to safeguard the security of the nation state. They also act to build the condition of security regionally and intentionally by reducing transnational cause of insecurity, such as climate change, economic inequality, political exclusion, and nuclear uh, proliferation. So let's let's look at what they said. This was a mouthful. National security is widely understood as in, uh, to include non-military dimensions, including from securing from terrorism, minimization of crime, economic security, energy security environmental security, food security. Right. See that? Food security right. is a measure of the availability of food and individual ability to access it. According to the United Nations Committee on World Food Security, food security is defined as meaning that all people at all times have a physical social economic access to sufficient i guess food supplies 
Hey, now I ain't gonna lie, that's heavy, right? Because we're talking about we're talking about national security, and then um, <clears throat> when we talk about national security, that is something that needs to be our priority amongst um, our community. Is that we have things in place to secure all of what you said on there. So when I talk about wealth, I said wealth is a group of men and women coming together, right? Yeah. Securing a area, right, or environment, right, to maintain all the resources in the environment to build institutions to maintain their way of life. That's what exactly. But you know what? I don't even think our people understand their way of life no more. Like, their way of life, what is their way of life? Baller. Huh? Baller. Yeah, I mean, right. It's a it's a it's a mis a misdirected understanding of like what the white white people on. You know, white people have a certain materialist materialism. And, you know, we kind of follow in there. But when you said that, it made me think, man, like, what are we securing? Like, what are we trying to defend having our way of life? What is our way of life? Have we lost our way of life? We we have lost our way, period. Lost our way of life, our understanding what life looked like our culture, our traditions, we then lost our way. We adopted other people's ideas of what our life should look like. And we took on those personas and we fulfilled those obligations to others instead of to ourselves. So we got to get back on the treadmill and understand what we are working towards by exercising certain things by understanding like i said national security those things need to under we need to teach our children that from the beginning these are national security should be taught in first grade but they're not going to teach we're not going to talk about those things at all that's not going to even be a subject matter at school at all I mean, you're right. You know, when you talk about security, uh, one thing you was talking about was terrorism. You know, it's like we don't look at how we're being attacked by, you know, you want to call it the system, but that's a form of terrorism. Or when we allow other people to come in our community and profit off of us, that's a form of terrorism. When they attack our food by giving us GMOs, that's a form of terrorism. Or low-grade food. They, they bring in fast food and, and low, low vibrational food into the community. And and we and that's what we're not securing because we should not even allow that in the in the community. Yeah, liquor stores every corner. We shouldn't have, I mean, you know, you're gonna have a liquor store. But I mean, like, you should, like, you you should not allow so many low vibrational foods. And then look look around in other places. There's this food deserts. There's food deserts, and I think food deserts is like a form of war. When you're trying to take over an area, you usually you usually cut off people's food supply. That's what you do. You cut people's food supply off. So you got food deserts, which is cutting off their supply. So they wind up leaving that area. And then and then they, they do the gentrification process. Right. Because what? because they got they got an agenda. <laughs> we don't. We just we just at the whim of everything. Right. So we talking about food and water. Where's our food bank? Where's our water storage? 
or water banks or or what they call where's your in in the city of Cincinnati they got waterworks. Where's your waterworks? Where's your water coming from? Where's your municipal or your water supply? Where's your water towers? Where are all of these things that we need to supply? What do those things, when I talk about national security, those are elements that, that need to be checked off. So if we're not talking about that in the movement, then we're not talking about nothing. Because the first element of securing a nation, you must have national security. You must, you must supply those things. And I was identifying that. Yeah, Facts. I see. That's, GMOs has been banned in other countries. You read, yeah. Europe, yeah, that's right. Europe, they, they don't even allow the, their food to come into Europe. It's banned. So what I'm saying to us is, why are we, what are we doing? I, I hear all this knowledge in the Norse community, but what is we doing? What is the thing that we're trying to secure? as it relates to national security. Right. And, and that's the first process that needs to be understood, national security. You know, I don't hear no more is talking about national security. No, I don't. I don't really hear them. I just don't really hear a lot of anything anymore. And that's what scares me. I mean, now don't get me wrong. I know that you're supposed to keep things on the low, but some of these things is is, is just prevalent. Like, like, bro, like we got to do this. Like, it's no secret, you know. I mean, I also feel like you got to have something to secure. If you got national security, it's to pres- it's to preserve something. So my thing is like, what are we preserving? Like we ain't got nothing to preserve. One of the things that me and you talk about that we haven't got to yet, King, is that we're not producing. I think the agenda for our people is to become producers. Manufacturers. Manufacturers, merchants, to be on the other side just instead of being on the consumer side. Exactly. And I mean consumer from like a spending perspective. We have to be able to flip or be on the merchant side and on the other side of this game in order to resurrect the community. And, and that's where that's where the problem lies. That's the problem, right? See, when 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 we came out of slavery, guess what? When we hit the ground running, we had all the skill sets, so we were able to build that build town, cities, banks, all of that stuff super fast because we knew what we wanted. We had an agenda. We finna get away from these people. We finna build our own and we finna live a good life. We knew that. We're not hungry anymore. We lazy. We comfortable. They put us in a position like that. You know, I think a lot of times is they put us in a position where they took away these things from us and stripped us away to the point where we wouldn't have anything, you know, and that, and now we're in a situation where we don't know how to do stuff. And that's what I was going to talk about too, because it's like, we don't know how to grow. Like even in the urban, in the urban communities where we're heavily concentrated, we don't have farmland. We live in this place called a community. But in that community, we don't even grow our own food in our own communities. Like there's always a spot where food can grow and you can protect it. But we don't do that as a people. We don't take uh, our land that we got. Like if somebody got land and property, I'm talking about like if you got a house with a backyard, why are we not using that backyard to grow our food? This is what's so funny. In some cities, you can't, that's, that's disallowed. You'll get fined for growing food in your yard. Well, even that, you know what? 
you can grow it in your house. Like uh, the ability to grow your own food. It's got to be one of the greatest gifts to man. It's to grow, it's to grow your own food. But what about filtering water? Our ability to filter water, create a filtration system to be having drinkable water. Because you, you can you can go two weeks. You know, people can fast for thirty days. You can't do that without no water. He said, "Was I talk now? Nah, I look. Hey, for, I say I never was taught to, to uh, tap for groundwater, man. Like I, 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 <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I've been living in the city, and that's a problem too. I mean, we've been urban. I'm, I've been urbanized like a mug. So I mean, that's one of the things we got to look at. I'm so oh, urbanized. I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, and that's the problem. You know, we not we so urbanized. We don't know how to like." filter our water now i do know how to filter some water you know but i don't you know to tap and find the water we those are some of the things that we have to have you know we need to have people like that around us and teach those people got to teach and everybody in the community has to be aware of certain things they can do and be able to do them you know because you can grow you can grow food in your house you know we need to like for example you can see this is what i'm saying if you look at some of the things they're doing in europe they're not even building like taking and saying okay we're going to expand our infrastructure further and further out what they started doing they started growing up they take their food and they got um they're, they're using these, um, uh, what they call those filtration systems them, um, where they can grow the food up. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Products and all of them, that different style. Um, they, they, it's a new form of that that they're utilizing to grow the food up. And it's, they, they're growing it up. It's not even in the ground. It's growing from the ground up right i got you and you're right and you're right and they're still and they start these big great i mean in switzerland they got a big storage facility for growing this kind of food where 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 is our where is our technology advancement in growing food like that where we can have abundance we don't we don't have that even if uh even without that technology if if certain people in the community would use their skill to grow food and as the community help protect that that's where that national security come from because it's like we wouldn't allow anybody to come in there and destroy them we would watch we would make sure certain places that we have, they would be well protected. We don't protect our neighborhood at all. I mean, you know, it'd be filled with trap houses. <laughs> it'd be filled with trap houses and crazy stuff. We don't really control, like I said, we don't control our neighborhood. But I ain't gonna lie, some of these, these places, so-called trap houses, should be really used to grow food in, bro, instead of trapping. I know you're muted, though. Yeah, we, um, we're not taking, like, we're not being eventful or being insightful to everything that we're doing. We're not planning events. These people are estate planning on a major scale they are planning 10 to 20 generations ahead to ensure the survival of their bloodlines we're not doing none of that no we need a think tank like we we talked about think tanks the other day 
And uh, one of the things that they have always done is they've come together in a think tank and f- to figure out their problems. Like they, they get to come, they come together and they figure out how they're going to deal with their problems. And they plan them out. And that's something that we're not doing. Let me see what you say. They say they're not growing it. They're burning. Hey, that's what they're doing, yo. They are burning down the food uh, dist- distribution centers, man. I, I mean, like, it's been over 100 uh, distribution centers in the United States have burned down mysteriously, bro. Like, they're they're plotting some kind of shortage. And then they got a solution. Now, I ain't going to get into I think I talked about this, but I know, like, like I know Bill Gates, they talking about they're part of that, uh, all that non-meat and, like, like uh, impossible and beyond meat. They're trying to implement that kind of food into society. So they're, they're killing off all the cows and the chickens. They're making a shortage. And then they're going to solve it by bringing in this uh, non meat substitutes so they're gonna be making money and they they be planning like that and i just feel like we don't plan in any way like that you know like like if if y'all remember watching harlem nights what made harlem nights such a good movie is they all came together and planned out how they was gonna do what they did they all stuck with it and they and, and, and they did what they supposed to do. We don't do that. We don't have no think tanks. So we ain't got no plan. I know, man. I'm sorry. I just this 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 this, this be crazy, man. And, and I think I think we lost and I think we now everybody want to do lectures and speaking and coming out and we're going to speak and come in and, and buy all of you know pay me to come into the city and speak but then you're doing all this speaking but what is your plan of actions what is what are you building what see like what we're doing now we're going to do something great we're trying to build something right i, I backed off chasing the 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 money and I had to use my intellect to build something. So now I I got a greater insight for what this movement should look like and how it should be core that how certain actions should be correlating together to give the birth of a new revolution of things, a, a do, different mindset of how we should be moving, acting, behaving, whatever you want to uh, define it as. But we need to be on this critical thinking assignment because I tell everyone life is a thinking man and woman sport. If you're not using, if you're not thinking, somebody else is thinking for you. And that's, those are facts. Right. Okay, I see system saying, yes, uh, yes, we are. It's more informational grouping. It's more so on social media and gatherings. I mean, it is, but like you said, informational gathering, informational grouping. Um, I mean, like, I will say this, when the white people get together, I don't, they, they actually get together in a think tank. You know, like when they had a G8, meet conventions they get the they they come in together they meet personally man they doing more than them coming together they coming together raising money and taking action it ain't no just we go we don't just give out this i'm gonna give you some information no this it, we it, the information age is about to be ran out it's time for action <laughs> It's time for action. Stop talking about it. It's time to be about it. Like Nike said, just do it. I mean, because they are. Like, that's the thing is they are planning. They're not stopping. They haven't stopped planning. 
They've been planning, planning, planning for the past, God damn it, 500 years they've been on this plan. So when, when are we going to pick up a plan? This, Like I said, this plan ain't even like to destroy nobody. It's just, this is just, what are we going to do to maintain ourselves? Like, like, I, like, I'll be tired of surviving. It's like we, it's like we, we like we scratching and surviving. That's where we've been at. Sucking and jiving. Man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, we're, we're stuck in that. You see what I'm saying? And then some of us think that we finally arrived. I be listening to people. I be listening to a whole lot of people. And I be listening to what they commentate on, especially these financial gurus. I'd be like, man, they, they don't even understand. Y'all look behind the curtain and see what's really going on. You giving people all of this financial advice, this wealth advisory, and you don't even understand wealth. Let me define wealth again. Once again, for all the listeners, wealth is when a man and a group of men and a group of women come together secure an environment, maintain the environment, and all the resources in that environment, and build institutions to maintain their way of life. That's wealth. If you're not doing that, then you're not wealth building. If you don't understand this system, you're not wealth building. If you're still dealing in Federal Reserve notes and not understand how to convert that, you're not wealth building. If you don't understand how to critically think about this movement, you don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes, you're not wealth building. Because you don't know what it looked like. You don't understand what it looked like. You don't understand how the system was engineered and the trickeries and the different things they put in place, but you're teaching people how to become wealthy? What are we going to have generational wealth? How? How? If I ask the average black rich entrepreneur celebrity and I asked them some things about federal, state, the Constitution, all of these different codes of federal relations, uh, code of federal regulations. They couldn't tell me nothing about. It. Couldn't tell me one thing. But you gonna talk to me about wealth? If I ask you about treaties. You gonna talk to me about wealth? Come on, man. I'm telling y'all, I'm gonna get this bag. Y'all can fall behind if you want to, but me and Chi, y'all gonna see us one day. And we're like, hey, they was talking about it. They really was about it. We get, we gonna get to it. I just had to take some time. I'm a critical thinker. I had to start filling in all the gaps. I'm genuine. I want to make sure that I understood everything as much as possible. And I'm still learning and developing. Because you got to understand, they learn and constantly learning and developing. In a minute, the Supreme Court said, we finna take out substantive due process. You say they gonna do what? That's what um, what's the black Supreme Court judge um? Cla Clarence Thomas. Thomas. Clarence Thomas. Yeah. Clarence Thomas said there should they he said that substantive due process is not even a part of American jurisprudence. It shouldn't even be there. 
Most of y'all don't even understand what's going on with that. If they take that out, oh, you shot in the damn foot. Why you say that? Because the substantive component is dealing with disclosure of information, of contract. Now, now they they say we don't gotta disclose nothing to you no more. All we got to do, if you get caught with property, we ain't got to tell you nothing. You just we just give you due process procedure. You ain't got to know that when we talk about substantive contracts, I mean uh uh, uh substantive due process, that's a right to understand what you get involved in, the right to review the contract. If that is now being waived, then you won't have any way to know anything about nothing. They don't gotta tell you nothing. Hey, you see this question? When the land is purchased, how do we get around eminent domain? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> That's a good question. Nah, I know, about- I, I know how to get around eminent domain. What is you purchasing the land with? What is your status as it relates to the land purchase? Is you coming under tree? Because I'm pretty sure if you purchase it in with Federal Reserve notes, you you subject to eminent domain. If you're using the address, you're subject to eminent domain. If you're in a volunteer status, you are subject to eminent domain. If you're not under the Constitution on the supremacy clause with treaty under supremacy clause of the United States Constitution, and you don't know how to enforce your treaty rights, you subject to eminent domain. What What about the ad? What about the address? You said something about that. The Tell address, me about the address. The address yeah. is how they recognize you being in the federal zone. That's the federal zone. Citizens. They deem you are deemed a corporation by recognition. And when I say recognize, reconnaissance, I want y'all to understand that's dealing in contract. They recognize that you contract with them. So okay. when you use the federal zone, they know that you're speaking in their language and you're within the federal territory in which now they can identify you and now they say you're subject to the jurisdiction why so, do you, before you uh, before you say go ahead. why do you think if a man is on child support or a bill collector looking for you what do they all they have to do is look up the last known address they don't got to know where you at they can just look up the last known address Put your butt in the newspaper and do a last known address, and they can sue you. Right. Because there's a carbon blueprint that you were within the jurisdiction. And now you are subject to the laws within that state, especially if your last known address was in a particular state. They can sue you within the jurisdiction, the jurisdiction of that state. That state got personal jurisdiction over you. I just wanted to add, you were talking about the federal, the federal zone. So you guys know that when you're definitely using the zip code, zip codes are federal zones. Those are federal zip codes. The federal government owns those zip codes. So just remember that when you're talking about an address. So point, I'm gonna be, you know, we're gonna be having these master class coming up soon. And we're gonna be teaching all the elements that you need 
so you can navigate so you can navigate the waters because you're dealing in admiralty maritime law as it relates to the jurisdiction so if you don't know i talk about effective communication if you don't know how to navigate the waters within the united states you're going to have a problem because you have to understand the different categories of law and how they affect you and how you are subject to the jurisdiction dealing with property law there's so many things that you need to know most of y'all don't understand how they still are adjudicating you man i just put my car in my trust you did what a lot of people say oh i just put my car in my trust can you yell man how do i put my car in my trust I, i'm registered from the state yeah you didn't do That's something what i would say i can't give them all the game online but the thing that i would like to say right yeah yeah i got y'all gotta come to the master class go ahead go ahead so you got people that put all this property in trust and then they wonder why the united states become and pierce the bells of their trust and take it out of the trust man i got a truck that don't mean nothing because you don't understand how the law was operating you don't understand the law you don't understand the constitution you got to really meditate and read the constitution break that thing down every word in that constitution you need to take some time and read that document very very thoroughly to ensure what you're reading right i bet y'all don't even know that what the 13th amendment is or the 14th amendment is mm -mm. i bet y'all don't even know those i bet you they don't even understand they're talking about three different people in the 14th amendment they don't even know what the 14th amendment is <clears throat> let alone that that's what i'm saying they don't know they ain't even read the 14th amendment these are the most this this is the most applicable things that was done in your name 13th and 14th amendment was done in your name for your ancestors and you don't even know them. but go ahead what's the 14th like so the 14th amendment is dealing with y'all citizenship so go ahead and get into that bro well let, let let me pull it up let's break it down so you know when you had a conversation on that so let's google it i want people to see it i don't like to just talk um i want them to see how things are drawn up most people don't know there are three things what they're talking about the u.s constitution and they don't understand it right so let's go into the 14th amendment i'm gonna pull it up real quick and we can get into this and i'm gonna go down to the 14th amendment I'm gonna break this down for the people so they can see it for themselves. Yeah, get into it, man. All right. Let me see it. If you pull it up. Now I'm about to pull it up now. I'm about to okay. go share the screen. Let's talk about the 14th Amendment. Let's break this on down. This is what I'm saying. The 14th Amendment. It says all persons born, okay, a person born in the United States or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. A lot of people miss that. They think that now they're subjects to the jurisdiction thereof so there's three persons there are persons born naturalized and subjects to the jurisdiction thereof and then they say are citizens of the united states and the states where they reside most people miss that Yeah, so, they're saying they're citizens of the states of the United States and the state wherein they reside. So let's talk about who are the subjects. Who 
school on the subject. But well, see, go ahead, because I'm, you know me. You know where this is where we always. Now, I'm just saying that this is breaking down. There's a, this is a, and it's a conjunction. So it says, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subjects to the jurisdiction thereof. It says, and subjects to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state they reside so you there are three people they're speaking on people born naturalized and subjects who are the subjects we need to go to black's laws dictionary and look up subject hold on let me pull up subject Let's look up subject as it relates to Blacks' laws as this education subject. I ain't say subject matter, I said subject. What is this subject? Hold on. Like I, but like I said, I think that's saying something else, though. I don't think it's saying that. Uh, it's talking think, about I, three people. It ain't, uh, uh, I don't think they said they saying born naturalized and who's subject to the jurisdiction. So uh, these two, so so you being born or naturalized are subject to a particular jurisdiction. No, that's what it's no, saying. No, that ain't what it's oh, saying. All right, all right. It, it don't say subjects. It don't have no s on the end. It says. This is what it says. Look at it. I didn't make this up. This is a conjunction. It says, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. All persons born naturalized in the United States. It don't say all. It says naturalized. It says all persons born. Yeah, or naturalized. And subject to the United States thereof. It, it, it could have right. said. It could have said subject to the it says subject to the jurisdiction. To you are subject subject. So are you telling me if they use the word subjected? No, this subject. is what I'm saying. They could have, why couldn't they just use the word are? All persons born, as all persons, it says all persons born and naturalized in the United States are subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Why would they put and? And like so, I would say my shoe socks and my hat. You got I mean, you. I mean, why would they? Why would they just say are subject to the jurisdiction of uh, love or is or use? But they use a conjunction like and but. It's a conjunction. Right. They added something else. A conjunction so, is where you adding something else to it. All right, all right, all right. All right. So you're saying that all persons born, naturalized in the United States, and subject to the jurisdiction of the world, all three of those are considered citizens right. of the United States. So let's go to subject. So let me huh, fix that forward, please. So it says as a subject, right? One that owes an allegiance to a sovereign subject. Right. And is governed by his laws. That's what a subject is. Yeah, and then it says the natives of Great Britain, the natives of Great Britain, are subjects of the British government. That's interesting. Men in free government are subjects as as well as citizens. So let's go to the Ohio Constitution. So citizens are subjects. Yeah. I get. So I always say it. 
No, but, no, but this is what it's, I want you to look at this. It says men in free government are subjects as well as citizens. Read that very carefully. It says men in free government are subjects as well as citizens. Yeah, that's deep. That's deep, bro. They classify two different things. Men right. And right. It says men in free government. Then it says as citizens, they enjoy rights and, and franchises. As subjects, they are bound to obey the law. Ooh, look at this. Ooh, I'm, I'm gonna take it. I said stop. No. Read that again. As citizens, they enjoy rights and franchises. As subjects, they are bound to obey the laws. So they're making a distinction between a citizen and a subject. A subject is not a citizen. They don't really want to go there with me. Y'all really want to know what an alien is? See, the alien. Hey, yeah, what is an alien let's, or alien? Let's, 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 let's go. See, I want to show y'all the connection. Who is really the subject? The 14th Amendment, there's three people they talking about. They talking about, they talking about people born, right? People who are naturalized, then they're talking about the alien. Let's go. Let me show you how I put this all together as it relates to the 14th Amendment. Most people didn't. Most people, it that went over their head. So let's go to alien as it relates. Let me show you something. Let me break this down for y'all so y'all can see. This is why I say people need the master class. Right. So, y'all like the video. Y'all smash that like button, y'all. Let me show y'all. Keep it going. What is the subject? Let me show you what is the You're talking about alien, though, right? We're talking about alien. What alien man? Yeah, alien. I'm going to show you. I'm going too far. Yeah, you didn't want too far, cool. Let me go just make this screen a little. Yeah, no doubt. Let me show you. Talk about that's why I say I, I had to go back and look at that. I had to, I said most people miss that. I'm gonna show you where the alien is as it relates to the jurisdiction. And it, I think in this definition, I need to, I'm trying to see. You get there. You, you know, you're getting there. You got to keep going. A -A 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 -L -I. I mean, A-L-E with E-I-N. A-L-E-I-N. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I want y'all to see this. An yeah. alien is a foreigner, one born abroad, a person who owes allegiance to a foreign government. Right. Right. I mean, like. That's a subject. An alien is a subject. You're not naturalized or you're a citizen of the United States. You're just a subject. In this in this country is a person born out of the United States and unnaturalized under our constitution and laws. In England, one born out of allegiance of, of the king. Let me see, I'm trying to see. Right, born out of the allegiance, I got you. Now, I got you. let me see, a native born. There's another definition though. Yeah, I'm going, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, 
it, it, I'm looking for, I don't know if they got a specific one as it relates, it says the 14th Amendment. It says it's an alien. So, but look, says, the other one, though. This one? Go ahead. It says to yeah, read it. an alien to transfer or make over to another to convey or transfer the property of a thing from one person to another to alienate usually applies to the transfer of lands and tenements you were alien you didn't took and they you didn't turn over all your uh land over to them as you a 14th amendment citizen let me see if i can read in this a native born Filipino living in the United States but not admitted to the United States citizenship was an alien. But the hey. term of immigration proposes would not apply to a Filipino seeking to enter to the territory of Hawaii or into the Filipino lawfully admitted to Hawaii who seek entry therefrom into the United States, nor to citizens of the Filipino islands of the Filipino race. It says as the effect of marriage on the status of a woman, whether they were originally aliens or citizens of the United States. So what I'm trying to get us to understand, you are not a citizen. You are not a you wasn't born into the United States. You are a alien by the 14th amendment you are foreign and subject to the jurisdiction and you turn over all your rights of land and everything to them check it out so sister asked a question so are you saying that blacks are subjects because we are supposedly from africa Blacks are subjects based upon their status. They are deemed to be foreign, foreigners. They're not to be deemed indigenous. Hold on, let's go here. Let's go to the edge. I'm going to say this too. I mean, blacks were not covered in the Constitution. You don't see anything about blacks having equal rights under the Constitution. Blacks you don't see it. Blacks can They couldn't be... They couldn't be citizens of the United States by default. They couldn't be one. Hold on. Let me, let me see if I can. I mean, I'm just saying, listen to what I'm saying. You couldn't be a citizen until the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment is what they said is what gave you citizenship. So before the 14th Amendment, all that time, you were a subject. You didn't have any rights. You didn't have any constitutional rights as a citizen. Like blacks couldn't even serve in the um, on jury duty. What are you talking about? Blacks couldn't serve on jury duty. Even a free black. Black. S subjects. Subjects. You ain't no citizen. A citizen has rights. You're not. I said subjects. Right. So let's go to the one Break in the form. This is their form. U.S. Office of Personal Management Guide to Personal Data Standards. Ethnicity yeah. and race identification. This ain't my form. This is their form. They tell you to put your social security number. They go over this. We can. This is according to what, 42? USC 2000E16. I didn't make this up. Here go black. And it goes to say a person having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa. Right. So basically the whole Africa. They talk about all the Africa. You ready? They're not giving me, you know, where in, like specifically in Africa. They just say Africa. <laughs> Even that, right. Like, I, look at Asia. Look at Asia. Asia got all the different 
countries, Cambodia, China, other countries, like all these different countries, India, Japan. But when they said black, it just so somewhere in Africa, <laughs> somewhere in Africa. Right, somewhere, somewhere. And then look at American Indian or Alaska Native, a person having origins in any of the original people of North and South America, including Central America, who, who maintains tribal affiliation or community attachment. Right. Now, this form right here is for you to send in to declare your racial category. Yeah, the one as right. the SF one eighty one form. I didn't make this up. Right, I've said this before. If you if you read the form, if you go all the way down, they don't have the full form on here like they used to. They tell you that none of this stuff is based in any scientific theories. It's not based on science. Most people don't read the form. Most people get this form and print it out and they don't read the form. Let me see if it if it is a pull up the full form. Let me see if it'll pull up the full form. Nope. Don't throw it. <laughs> Yeah. So a lot of people they don't yeah. understand. So let's go back to the Constitution. It says all persons born, naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. And subject to the jurisdiction thereof. So it's a conjunction, like they're adding something to it. Yes. Then yes. they say, are citizens of the United States and of the state where they reside. So right here, it's an oxymoron. You can't, they just, you can't be a citizen and a subject at the same time. I got you, bro. I got you. That's an oxymoron. They just told you what a subject was. One who owes allegiance to a foreign and is governed by his laws. They told you what a sub, what an alien is, and a subject is. Let's go to an alien once again. Well, right, because alien has another meaning as well. Yeah, I'm trying to see what I do with it. What I do with it. Then it was like, okay, now I got it. Now let's go to alien. As it relates, it's a foreign, a foreigner, one born abroad, a person who owes allegiance to a foreign government. Right. <laughs> Hold up. L -I -E -E. Now let's go to citizen. Now let's go. To, I'm not making this stuff up. This is showing you all the stuff you need to understand. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we'll put this. Let's go to citizens. Why it won't come up? Uh. You know, because when we talk about that too, you know, you talk about alienable or alienable. That's got the word alien in it. You know, alienable, alienable rights or inalienable rights. And, and when they talk about alien, alien, like. 
there's a lean on that individual. <laughs> what are you looking for now? What you looking for now? What my computer say? Man? What you looking? Oh, you. What you looking? you muted yourself. You I'm hear me? trying to find, um, like it says, a citizen is a, a subject. He has a lean upon him. That's what the birth certificate is. They lean you. You're not a citizen. You're an alien. So let's go and look up citizenship. What's my thing at, man? I got how much left? Let me break this down for y'all. So I got a bit. Yeah, I got a few minutes left, man. I ain't got my charger on it. My computer probably got about maybe 20 minutes. But y'all, anyway, for all of out there, like I said, smash the like button. Better Let's like. check out. Yes, sir. Could you see this? Yeah. What's up? Can you see this? I yes, sir. I can't, you can't see it. it. No. Oh, my so daughter, so. She, was, she was unplugging the speakers. I couldn't hear nothing. Oh, it says, okay. Citizen, a member of a free city or jewel society possessing all the rights and privileges which can be enjoyed by any person under its constitution and government and subject to the corresponding duties. Citizens are members of community inspired to be common goal who in associated Relations submit themselves to the rules and conduct for promoting for, for promotion of general welfare and conservation of individuals as well as collective rights. Now look what they say though. Now when you read this, you said person under its constitution and government. Now look, it says and subject to the corresponding duties. Now that read just like what the almost like what the Constitution said, right? And subject to, but I don't think that's what they're talking. They're not. They're not talking about a subject right there. But in that particular wait, context. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's look up. Let's let me see. Let me see the Fourteenth Amendment. I need to, and I want to show. I'm trying to see. Where did I find it at? It's, it's in a dictionary. And it says that the 14th Amendment, let me see if we can find it. It says, yeah, find it. let me see if it's, let me see if was it this one. Let me show you. It said, it, it identify you as an alien. 14th Amendment is an alien. Let me see. Was it? Let me go to the other comp. Let me go to here. Let me come out of here. Go ahead and do that. I'm, uh, 
I'm gonna come out of here. Let me go to her. Let me go to here. I'm uh Let me see what this is. I'm gonna look up this definition. Copy. All right, I'm gonna bring this over my the. Yo, so I'm looking up Aileen, and uh, and I'm gonna bring the definition, please. So, we're looking at Aileen. I want to just talk about that a little bit more. Like when you're looking at Aileen, alien is Aileen, and Aileen is a right to keep possessions of property belonging to another person until a debt owed by that person is discharged. Let me see who's in the uh, let me see who's in the comment. Who's in the building? Y'all smash the like the like button. Let me see. So basically you're saying you're still, yeah, I'm gonna tell you like this. We basically we basically been enslaved. I mean, you kind of just got transferred from one slave master to another. One slave master to another. Through the Constitution. The Constitution basically transferred you over. You were Because you were already property. And then you got transferred over to uh, another group. Instead of you being under the slave master. So let, oh. let, me, let me pull this up. Can you see this? Damn. Where did I go? Yeah. I just. I got you. Hold on. Let me. I got to close some of this stuff out. Yeah, you're doing too much. Hold on. I got too much stuff. But it's interesting, though, that, that, that transfer of property. You see this? And now we ain't even touching. I'm a, I'm a, it's, it's in one of these uh, it's in one of these books. A alien a alien registration act, a federal statute constituting a part of a comprehensive scheme for the regulation of aliens, requiring the registration and fingerprinting of all aliens in the country those over 14 years of age on their own application and those under 14 years of age on the application of a parent or guardian 8 usc alien let's go here you see that one down there alien resident c expatriate a person who is a citizen of another country but reside in the United States. See expatriation. So let me see on this section. This is section on this. Let me see if we can pull up. No, one cop. Why I don't want to copy? Yeah, I can't Why copy. Yeah. It won't let me copy. Uh, so I'm gonna have to type it in. So let me. Oh, okay. Eight USC, thirteen oh one. Ooh, I got ten minutes left. Hey. 
we about to get we probably about to end this up in a minute. Like let you make this last point. Okay. But and we I, will, I will post where it is where United States. So it's under eight USC thirteen. Give it to me so we can put it in a description. You know. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Hey, well, I'm yeah, what you doing? What you doing? I know it's late, bro. <laughs> I know it's late. We about to be done, though, yo. We about to be done. We just, you know, you know how we do, man. We start getting, we start getting into this stuff. We start getting into this law. It's such a rabbit hole. And that's real. Thirteen oh two. That sounds like alien houses, aliens, and nationality. I got thirteen minutes left, man. I got. Here it go, right here. Yeah. I'm going to put it in the chat so people can look at it. But, um, put it in the chat. So you can see I'm not making this stuff up. It says under undertone aliens and nationality, registration of aliens. This is what it said. It shall be the duty of every alien now here at Hereafter, the United States, who is 14 years of age or older, has not been registered or fingerprinted under Section 1201 of this title or Section 3130 or 31 of an Alien Registration Act in 1940, remains in the United States for 30 days or longer to apply for registration and be fingerprinted before the exp expiration of such 30 days. It shall be the duty of every parent or legal guardian of any alien now or hereafter, hereafter in the United States who, one, is less than 14 years of age, two, has not been registered under the Section 1201B of this title and Section 30 or 31 of the Alien Registration Act Three, remains in the United States for 30 days or longer to apply for a registration of alien before the expiration of such 30 days. Whenever any alien attains his 14th birthday in the United States, he shall within 30 days thereafter apply in person for registration and to be fingerprinted. The Attorney General, in his discretion, on the basis of reciprocity, pursuant to the regulations as he may prescribe, weigh the requirement of fingerprinting specified in subjection A, B of this section in the case of any non-immigrant. So I want you to understand, we are non-immigrants. What happens when you're born? What do they do? They take your feet print. Who do it? Your mama and daddy. What is your birth called a birth registration? They are registering you as an alien. What are they putting on the birth certificate in the social security card? A lien. You are not a citizen. They had to put a lien on the property. Real talk. Real talk, so, man. Bo. So I will, yeah, I will, you gonna have to wrap it. Up. I'm gonna break that down. I'm gonna show you. We'll probably get in that when we get into another topic on the 14th Amendment. Let me see if let me see if it'll pop up. I'm gonna have to shut it. My my, uh, my computer about to shut down on you, bro. I know. We're about to get got, out of here. I got a couple a couple minutes. I don't really have much time. All right, let me see. I just want to. 
It says, what is the 14th Amendment summary for aliens? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get this out the way. We're gonna break this down real quick. The US 14th Amendment states all persons born naturalized in the United States as well as subjects. You see that? I didn't say that. As well as subjects to the jurisdiction thereof. Or United States citizen and state upon which they reside. The table, what did the 14th Amendment do? What rights do legal aliens have in America? So I'm just showing you. They stated right here in breaking this down in the article that it says U.S. citizens and 14th Amendment states all persons born or naturalized in the United States as well as subjects to the jurisdiction thereof as well as subjects or citizens. So I just wanted to show you in this article and it talks about that. So what are alien rights? An alien have inalienable right to life. They are also protected by laws. No one can torture or humili humiliate them, treat them ill or punish them, nor can they be enslaved. A person born in a nation ruled by aliens have full liberty and security. So I just wanted to show y'all that when it's talking about the 14th Amendment, they're talking, you're not a citizen, you wouldn't naturalize, you are nothing but a foreign alien. All right, all right, all right, y'all. All right, man, we're going to get up out of y'all. You know, please, like I said, like, like and subscribe. Check out all our videos, man. We're going to catch you on the next video. Until then, we out. Two-time, nine, nine.